Dr. Prem, you may please begin. Yeah. Should we start, Anshu? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, my name is Prem Kumar. I work at uh, Munjal BCU Center of Innovation and Enterprise. I welcome you all for the deep dive sessions on the STEAM pedagogy. This is planned to be an interactive session for participants. I am sure you will have many questions to understand this new model of education. Please put your questions in questions and answer section. We'll spend some time later to discuss your questions and follow up on uh, social media as well. To kick off the series, we have Mr. S.K. Rai, Managing Director and Vice Chairman Hero Cycles Limited. Mr. Rai is one of the innovation pioneers of the Indian manufacturing sector. He has uh, over 40 years of rich experience in Indian manufacturing industry in multiple domains. He is credited with perfecting the art of mass production and technological innovation, which made Hero Cycle as the largest bicycle manufacturer in the world. Sir, welcome to the deep dive sessions. On 1st of July, we had organized a national seminar on transforming education through STEAM, which had a very big response from uh, the audience across the world. Building on that, we are here to provide our audience with more insights into the STEAM education with three deep dive sessions lined up for the next three days. Today, we'll have uh, a deep dive session on STEAM pedagogy, practical insights into implementing a shift in learning approach, delivered by Dr. Lara Furness and Miss Alice Oldfield and their colleagues from the Faculty of Art and Design, Birmingham City University. Welcome, Mr. Rai. We are fortunate to have you with us today for starting this journey of STEAM education in India. Namaskar. Good afternoon to everybody. Doctor has been very kind in saying what he wants to say. Uh, let me 
let me start telling you the genesis of what we are doing now and how you people are present there. A lot of your friends will be joining a little later. But I just want to share as to why, why we are doing it, what kind of deep dive it is. Munjal family is one of the largest in this part of the country, all put together. And we are involved very deeply into the lighting industry. Munjal family came from Pakistan, almost empty-handed. And what they have done to the horizon of industry in India is something, a matter of great study. Lots of studies things have been done. But at the same time, they were very keen to return what they have gained from themselves. And even before CSR was a buzzword or something, they've been doing it. And why I'm trying to do it, a lot of my of people who are participating, they need to understand as to where they are, we are heading and what we are doing. We had a family uh, foundation by the name of Lala Bahadur Chand Munjal Foundation, which was very deeply involved in education. We run six schools here. We run a voluntary uh, vocational training thing. We were involved in medical education also. We were doing all this. And the first generation, we were all one family, and the first generation became 90 plus. So they decided to part. But this particular endeavor of the group, it is still intact. All the four firms are participating. That means about more than 100,000 people employed by us. We are the largest in motorcycle, cycle, and almost in every part that we do. So imagine what is the strength of this arm of the foundation, what is our commitment to this? So once the first generation which was running these shows decided uh, to uh, uh, bring a new generation to take it over, Sunil Kant Munjal, who was also the president of Dhun School, one of the most prestigious school in this country, took over this uh, initiative. Took over this initiative. <laughs> It was very apparent to us, two ways. One, that we have been running the colleges in a particular way for the last 40, 50 years. They are required to be modified. That's point number one. Point number two, Sunil was a great advocate saying that, look, Mr. Rai, this way of education is not making us competitive globally. There's a huge political, global vision travels everywhere in the board, world over. So what he has started saying, that if we want to make an impact, and if Ludhiana, for that matter, Punjab, has to rediscover itself, we should start some way. I have been telling him, sir, what can all be doing? But he says, somebody will have to begin. So why not we? So this is how all this is started. His first attempt was preschool. And imagine preschool is a very conventional, but he started telling all and sundry that, look, Boys up to three, four years for develop their mind and brains, learn how to function both sides of the brain. So we have started a preschool, which is all together on different lines than it is there. It will take some time to take its root. Then what to do with the conventional where CBSC is providing the certification? He said, okay, let's get started with the tinkering lab as an important ingredient to the learning. Through the part of the curriculum. And along with Tinkering Lab, we brought a Stempedia company, which provides the e-learning. So we, we went into the uh, training, CDT as we call it. We went into AI, we went to, into all kinds of things that people weigh very highly to white and all that. So there we are doing very well. Slowly it will expand. There's a lot of expectation from that. Then he started saying, look, the, we are not in the undergraduate and postgraduate anywhere, nor we are on the innovation or incubation or uh, creating a seed for this. So he said, look, we need to have a new education. My own request with him is that we have to have a role model. We can't discover the wheel ourselves. At a particular time when we started looking about two years back, the corona was also around the corner. It has not come that way. We were lucky then. 
first he started looking to Europe and the uh, US for a step and a solution. Then we found out our friend sitting with you here today, the CEO, Dr. Claude and Julian Beer and all that. They were very, very well known suddenly for their STEAM education. They have done, really made a mark. So we found a wonderful partners in them. They came here. They were, uh, they were also keen to spread their wings out of UK. They, they had some small footings in uh, Emirates in Egypt also. But they thought their impact in India will be much larger, and rightly so. We decided to be partner with this. And in the process, we found out, we formed an institution by the name of MBCI, which will take a form of university in a given point of time, but we are getting involved into it. So initially, we'll start on a very small scale, then move forward to this. Now, MBCI is part of the larger national thinking, what people have started knowing in the new education policy. New education policy is still fumbling to find out what to do what. They are still not able to define themselves. But because of BCU presence, we have been able to define as to what a new education, which talks about innovation, creativity, and creating atmosphere where you can be more productive. This is something that was very much needed. In these times, conventional education has lost its value. Today, people are experimenting in India also. And liberal art college in Gurgama, Ashoka, it, it does not admit less than anybody, less than 90%. So I, for two things, I'm, what I'm trying to tell to the lot of people who are new audiences here, that even in India, there is a realization that doing BSc, BA, BCom, or B or doing, is taking you nowhere. You have to be, if you want to be competitive, make a mark, you have to be creative, you have to be innovative, and you have to be multi -scalous. With that in mind, this, it is the STEAM education which we hope it is utopia, will improve with respect to the country and all that. But I have to tell my prospective people, this is what exactly we are going to offer. This is what STEAM education is all about. We have to let them know, in their sense, everything cannot be done. So before, and this is what is our experience in industry. First, you let, let you have to allow people to understand what they're buying, what is the product, why they're going to it. So we are transferring our experience of industry to the education to some extent. Once Dr. Prem Kumar, my colleague, and more enthusiastic than me in these endeavors, did a wonderful seminar as, uh, where I uh, imagine we had booked for 500 people to participate on Zoom, then it went to 1,000. Our total entry was 3,000 1, people participated on Zoom. More than 1,000 people participated in other, other media. It was a very exhilarating experience that people want to understand what Munjal family is doing, what such a big name in industry is doing in, in modern and new education. So we were really encouraged. And I'm sure BCU, my colleagues over there, have never seen this kind of enthusiasm anywhere. After the success of that, after the success of that, it was very clear to us that we should do a deep drive into it. That was only the essence. Most of the people wouldn't have understood the extent or the way it was spoken by my British colleagues there. So a deep dive session telling how a cup is designed, how a design of a cup it involves aesthetics, involves art, involves science, involves architecture. And unless you have some idea of this, you can never be a good designer. And beautifully, you will understand in the next three days as to why, why you do, what you do, whenever you do, there is an element of all these things put together. And that put together is the basic crux of your being creative. So this is what in three days they will let you know. And believe me, this is only one part. We are not here to do graduate, undergraduate. 
we are going to establish a great in innovation center with mbc you believe me if you have the god has given a lot of whatever stints to have given to us or to our family we will be creating the innovation center which will be the nation pride and believe me we are going to create innovation uh, the incubation center all the people who are sitting here with my all stint that and my such a long association with munjal family i can say with all guarantee that i have in my mind and the god has given to us that our incubation center will be a model why it will be model i i can share that it will be model because i will be asking people who will join us bsc and msc to be creative create their own enterprises start, start with the startups we'll fund it will help you in the assimilating idea so we'll do whatever possible in our hands to enhance the creativity in this part of the country i cannot vouch say for the all over india but the, this part of the country which which is said to be the university of entrepreneurs is now losing battle part of creativity is not coming unless we are perpetually creative create the problem with creativity is that you cannot be creative once and forget about it you have to be perpetually creative so your yeah, formal education and how to be a creative has also to be imparted so please please my humble request to all of you that listen carefully what is being deliberated in next few days the kind of faculty we have assembled you cannot get it everybody is a great expert in this particular field listen carefully i can understand i myself find difficult to understand pronunciations but and most of you i find that there are students from various colleges and universities and you don't have much of an exposure to that extent but listen carefully ask questions we will answer today or after tomorrow you can write to dr prem kumar or vijay who is with bcu but is going to join us here as a bridge so you can always ask us learn that how munjal family has done things differently same thing basically is not in our most cycles were available the munjal family has done the same thing differently and with the great results so i wish all the people who are participating today a great future for you and also i wish all the participants sitting here to have a have a strength of saying that at least if, even if you don't join at least you have participated in a concept which is not being talked in the so a very fortunate people after 3 days you will realize as to what what kind of education exposure will have in future but what kind of thing that we are talking so my best wishes to all of you to your families that they have allowed you to participate and i'm sure you will understand why a company grows and why the people who are around it the students around us can grow basking under the glory of the munjal family thank you Thanks for it. Thank you, Dr. Prem Kumar and Vijay and the company. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Rai Sir. Uh, Mr. Rai has uh, set a very powerful perspective, and uh, the team is uh, absolutely fresh model of education relevant to the 21st century. Now I hand over the forum to uh, Miss Sarah Middleton. she is associate dean uh, at the faculty of uh, media art and design at uh, birmingham city university sera will introduce the team uh, which is uh, delivering the session today and uh, we look forward to getting back to you with your questions thank you mr rai for uh, <coughs> sparing your valuable time with us thank you thank you very much Thank you. Um we're very excited to be here today um to share some of our case studies um related to um teaching and learning. So my name is Sarah Middleton and I'm associate dean for the Faculty of Arts, Design and Media at Birmingham City University. And today's session will show you how steam thinking practice and methods can transform your teaching and learning. we'll give you some practical examples and case studies and we'll show you how we've collaborated with industry how to embed steam into 
um, undergraduate research modules, but also ways to engage young people with real world challenge based learning. So we have three speakers from Birmingham City University. So the first one who's going to speak today was Dr. Lara Furness. She has an extensive professional experience working across art and design disciplines. And her presentation today will look at her PhD study, which involved design practice and design education, but also looking at non-discipline specific problems and how you solve it together. And she just developed a new course at Birmingham City University, which is using STEAM thinking um, to deliver a BA in art and design course, and also one with creative technologies. Our second speaker is Patrick Neck. He is the head of new product development at Steam House, and he has extensive experience of product and service design. And he's gonna give us a specific case study of where we worked with industry using STEAM thinking. And our final contributor is Miss Alice Oldfield. She's a lecturer at the School of Art and she has been embedding different methodologies into the curriculum. The one she's specifically going to talk to you today about is how you use STEAM thinking in research modules around research methodologies. She's also going to talk to you about the Junior STEAM Academy we've developed and piloted over the last 18 months. And this is to use that kind of thinking with 10 and 11 year olds. And she's also created a manual as a guide to introduce um, teachers into this way of thinking so we can prepare our young people for the future of STEAM. So I'm just going to hand you over to our first speaker, which is Dr. Lara Furness. Great, thank you, Sarah. Um, hopefully everyone can see my slides. Um, hello, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to um, go through now an example of how we have been collaborating with industry to create a new STEAM undergraduate course. So this process began with my PhD study, which looked at positioning design practice and education for the 21st century. Um, this came out of, of what I perceived to be a disconnection between the fluid evolving practice or interdisciplinary practice that was growing in the UK, um, in contrast to the very siloed structure that still exists within higher education. An early report I conducted um, concluded that for design to be taught well, education needs to look to current practice and alternative educational models to better understand the processes and skills that our graduates will need. So firstly, I look back at innovative radical pedagogies and particularly in the 20th century. So looking at examples like the Bauhaus, the new Bauhaus, Ulm, the Construction School and the National Institute of Design and obviously the Eames India report that was advocating a STEAM way of thinking, um, you know, even in the 1950s. I then did an in-depth study of five studios based in the UK who um, are leading in innovation in their practice and cross art, design and architecture and don't define themselves by discipline. So the first studio was Ron Arad Associates who design everything from chairs to buildings. The next studio was Heatherwick Studio who again brought, uh, design a broad range from chairs to buildings to buses and bridges um, and also the Olympic Cauldron from 2012. Then Jason Brew Studio who are more technical based and cross interaction design with cybernetics and four dimensional architecture. Punch Drunk, who are a performance company that um, specialise in immersive experiences in all sorts of environments. And then Assemble, who are a young studio who primarily focus on designing services for local communities. So what I did is I spent time in their studios talking to them about how they do what they do. And then I pulled commonalities together between them. So the first commonality was about their process. So they all use an emergent process 
It's non-linear and it's unique every time. Their process is extremely iterative, messy and very time consuming. And they all focus on um, being human centered. So placing people at the heart of what they do. Then commonalities in attributes. So what they feel young people need to join their studio and top of the list is social skills. So they talk about personalities over degrees, um, which is why there are members in every studio that are not formally design trained. Um, they also want a universal outlook, confidence, curiosity, and again, that audience focus, as well as uh, a commitment to quality and communication skills. Then finally, in terms of commonalities and pedagogy, they feel that higher education should be providing more fluidity and breadth. We should be celebrating failure and risk taking. We should look at redefining design, provide appropriate space to make, enable collaboration and also build stronger connections with industry. So when I pulled those commonalities together, I then realized the strong connection to STEAM pedagogy and STEAM thinking, um, which suggests that graduates need to be able to be adaptable, curious, collaborative, entrepreneurial. So there was a strong connection between the two. So then I was asked to design this new course at Birmingham City University, which is art and design with creative technologies. So to do that, I built an interdisciplinary team from staff across the Birmingham Institute of Creative Arts but I also reached out to experts in the School of Education and also experts in other institutions in the UK, including Goldsmiths in London. So the aim of the course, and this is the um, introduction in our prospectus um, to explain what we're trying to do to students. And it says many innovative creative studios now define themselves as interdisciplinary, a word which we define as the fluid movement across the fields of art, design and technology. Rather than specialising in a particular discipline such as graphics or animation, our cutting edge course reflects how these studios practice by exploring the intersection between art and design with the implementation of new creative digital technologies. So we've worked with students, um, both current students and alumni to help feedback to develop the course and some of their responses have been very um, encouraging. They describe it as a beta mode course, um, that the course is a constant work in progress and that the developers are the students themselves and we felt this was really appropriate with what we're trying to do. It's about things being incomplete. It's about rapid learning, experimentation, and about progress rather than perfection. So for the curriculum structure, level four, their first year, takes the students from I to us. So this means we develop their self-awareness to then be able to collaborate with each other. And to do that, they will navigate through three primary labs. And these labs represent the interdisciplinary design process and the fundamentals of that process. And they're the thought lab, the materials lab, and the digital lab. And what brings them together is communal collaboration. So these labs have their own individual identities, but what's most important is how these labs come together and interact. And that will be down to the students themselves to shape that interaction. So the thought lab is about building the self-awareness and self-confidence for the students. It's about starting to apply design thinking, building communication tools, and understanding the involving design practice world. The materials lab is then about taking that design thinking and applying it to 3D making. So that's about looking at the connectivity of materials, testing, experimenting, and prototyping. And then the digital lab, again, applies that design thinking to 4D making. So it's about experimenting, testing, and embracing a wide range of new technologies. Then once the students have navigated through those first three labs, they will then move through another three labs for the remainder of their first year. The first is the nature lab, which is about using found materials in the natural environment. Then the performance lab, which is about making narrative and storytelling. And finally, the roundup of the year is the speculative lab, which is brings everything together where the students get the chance to self organize to collaboratively develop speculative proposals. 
Then we move into the second year and level five, and the students then move from us to we. So that is them moving from working with each other to becoming a unit working with external clients. They'll focus on live briefs, and these briefs will be um, either local, national, or global. Then in level six, it's about the students navigating their own way through the labs. So they may choose one lab or a combination of labs, but it's about them creating, researching, and identifying their future direction. So key to this is the space. As I realized in the studios that I was in for my PhD study, the design of the space is critical to enable this kind of agility and iteration to happen. So we're proposing one incubator space with making it its heart um, and it's flexible and open plan. So the labs will physically be spaces within one um, overall space. And we've been looking at examples. This is at Virginia Tech in America, where multiple disciplines work within one space, and then they have this communal classroom bringing everything together. And then finally, the curriculum is continued to be shaped with industry. So we're working with a local industry partner, um, Antonio Roberts, who's a new media artist and curator, and he's providing feedback on the course and delivering hopefully live briefs and masterclasses. We're working with Jason Brew Studio, who are based in London, who are part of my PhD study. Jason is now a visiting professor in design studio practice for us at the university. He's going to be advocating the course, helping with curriculum development, module design, helping with the studio space design. Um, he's going to be testing curriculum ideas with his studio and also delivering live briefs and masterclasses. And finally, we're working with global partners as well. And we hope to be able to grow this um, as well. But at the moment, we're currently having conversations with ABK Stuttgart, with Cal Poly in California, and the School of the Art Institute in Chicago. And we've been with them. We've been sharing interdisciplinary STEAM approaches. We've been identifying future and um, collaborative opportunities. And what's been fantastic is they've all been in full agreement with the design of our course. And, and most importantly, the key attributes that we're identifying that we feel our students need. So in conclusion, the course has been shaped by industry from the findings of the PhD study. It will continue to, be, to iteratively evolve in collaboration with industry, and hopefully this will help it to stay relevant and to follow the ethos of STEAM. And that's it, thank you. Thank you. Laura, can you please now invite uh, the, uh, I think uh, it is Alice turn. It's Patrick next, so if we hand over to um, Patrick now. Okay. Okay, hi everyone, thanks for having me. I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay, could everyone let me know or somebody let me know if they can see the screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so thanks again. Uh, I'm Patrick, Head of New Product Development at Steamhouse. Um, you'll hear a lot more about Steamhouse, I think, throughout the week. Um, it's Birmingham City University's Centre for Collaborative Innovation. Uh, and what I do there is help enterprises in our region uh, come together collaboratively uh, to try and solve some of their biggest challenges using STEAM thinking methods and approaches. Uh, so I'm going to talk about one of those examples today. Okay. So one of the uh, collaborative working methods that we use is called a STEAM lab. Uh, it's usually an online, sorry, it's usually a face-to-face -face, um, workshop uh, where we bring people together uh, to work through highly experimental, uh, playful exercises where participants experiment with processes um, that impel them to think about the development of projects, products and services in completely new ways. Um, each STEAM lab is completely different uh, depending on the needs of the client or the potentially the problem that they're trying to solve, um, but everyone is underpinned by our five guiding principles. So we ensure that conversation happens, that exploration happens, 
obviously collaboration is very important, but also openness and honesty, transparency in the space. Uh, and hopefully, if all of that happens, we move towards some newness. So um, recently we were approached by a company called Mutt McDonald uh, to help them explore what the future of skills might look like in their industry. Um, so to set the scene, uh, Mutt McDonald is a UK based engineering company with a worldwide reach. They work across a range of sectors, um, largely centered on consultancy, management, engineering and infrastructure development. Um, so to give you an idea of the scale of their work, they employ 16,000 staff in 150 countries. Uh, and this image here is one of their many new projects this year. It's the Shenzhen Transport Hub in China, uh, which is set to be one of the most uh, integrated transport interchanges in the world. <laughs> so Mark McDonald approached Steamhouse to design and deliver a series of collaborative online workshops because of um, everybody being locked down. Um, so, uh, and this was part of their, uh, what they call their annual Futures Week, uh, which is a company-wide activity designed to help colleagues explore and anticipate the future of the engineering industry. Uh, so in response, we created what we would call an online STEAM lab um, that used speculative thinking and STEAM thinking methods uh, to enable Mott McDonald's early career professionals to imagine multiple different futures and explore what skills and attributes might be required to navigate those futures. Um, and every STEAM lab that we activate begins with a big question, uh, and that's designed to inspire a variety of participants to explore the topic. Uh, and this was the question that Mott McDonald uh, wanted to investigate. So how might we, Mott McDonald, still exist in 15 years and how will we thrive? Um, so it was really important to the senior team at the company um, to, to show that they recognise that the disruption caused by COVID-19 uh, has made it only too clear that the future will be characterised by volatile change and uncertainty. Um, so to address this, they wanted to engage new starters and recent graduates in the company to explore the topic to inform their future skills training and development programmes in the company. So here's a snapshot of our participants. Uh, and it's really important to us at Steamhouse that when we bring people together, that they come with very different perspectives. Uh, and you can see that we work with graduates who'd studied economics, engineering, sustainability, uh, ecology and design. So the aim of the first activity in the STEAM, STEAM lab, you can see these are a couple of um, screenshots because it was an online activity. We used uh, a software called Miro and then Teams to help facilitate the activities. Um, and the first thing that we did was to uncover participant skills and attributes that Mark McDonald might not currently be seeing or hearing. And the point here was to lift the lid on what's already there. Uh, the leadership team at the company know that their staff are technically skilled, but they were looking for things not normally discussed in an engineering context. So participants were tasked with mapping as many hard skills, soft skills, digital skills, human skills, as they could without overthinking it. So we made it a bit of a challenge. Um, and so we wanted to hear if they were great cooks, if they were skilled gamers, if they were sports people, this was all really important uh, to the context of the work that they'll be undertaking at the company. Um, once the participants had mapped their skills and attributes, we asked them to plot them one by one on a scale of least important to most important in their industry. And as you can imagine, this ignited a discussion about our current perceptions of what skills and attributes are important in today's workplace. So we then jumped into what we would call a future scanning exercise, um, where participants collaborated to co-create a vision of the future through the lens of the past and the present. And to do that, we use this timeline that you can see here. So we asked the group to write significant forces like trends, technologies, political movements and behavioral shifts on little digital post-its. Uh, and participants then posted them onto the timeline that started on the far left there in 2018 and ended in the year 2045. Uh, so the aim here was to work towards a future together year by year, filling the wall with post-its in 15 minutes. So again, if you put a bit of a challenge and a game behind it, um, often it will kind of derive more insights from a group. So everyone was encouraged to think about their industry and consider society as a whole. Uh, we then discussed our insights to find commonalities and themes along the timeline before exploring alternative futures that had been mapped 
and asking questions about what those futures might mean for their industry. So it was really important for Mott McDonald to provide a space during the workshops to explore the consequences of some of the emerging trends in areas like technology and climate change. Um, so we created a deck of kind of digital cards um, that detailed various different aspects of possible futures. Um, and participants then came together uh, to construct imagined future scenarios using those cards. So picking out cards and then assembling four or five different cards that represented a new future of some sort. They were then asked questions um, such as how might this future scenario change the way Mott McDonald operates or what skills and attributes might you need to operate effectively in this world. And then finally, um, the group was invited to reflect on their work together throughout the workshop uh, and create a profile of themselves in 2045. So to support this, we asked questions such as how has your mindset changed over the years and why? How did you gain new skills and attributes over the past 15 years? And what did Mott McDonald do to support you on your journey? And then to wrap up, each participant had the chance to present their future selves to the group, including one thing that they'll do differently today as a result of the STEAM Lab workshops. So to sum up, uh, this STEAM Lab activity, I think for us at STEAM House just proves how much of a priority multidisciplinary skills and attributes are to some of the industry's largest employers. And I think it also shows how creative thinking is a way of unlocking that discussion. Um, so I'd just like to finish up with this diagram um, that describes how our work with industry aims to generate and exchange new knowledge that benefit, benefits our students as well as enterprises in the region. So uh, if you look to the bubble at the top in the centre, number one, um, our faculties through the work that they do in research and teaching, they generate new knowledge. Um, so then in Steamhouse, we apply that knowledge in our commercial offer. So our STEAM Lab activities are part of that commercial offer that we offer to industry. Um, we then deliver that service um, and then evaluate the impact of that service on the problem space. Um, we write that up in a case study. That case study is shared with the wide, wider university. And then our ambition is that that work um, would provide the basis for a new project in the faculty with students. This then in turn influences future teaching. And then you know, we're back to step one faculties are creating new knowledge through that activity. Um, so just as a final note at Steamhouse, um, we believe that effective knowledge exchange is the key to unlocking innovation for students and enterprises. Thank you everyone, that's me, and I'm going to hand over to Alice. And maybe Patrick, you can tell me whether you can see the first slide as a presentation. Yeah, that's great. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about how we use STEAM principles and apply them to curriculum. And I have two examples to help me do this. The first is at the Birmingham School of Art. And the second case is working with local primary schools. Um, so for my first case, specifically, I'm going to talk about teaching on the current BA Art and Design course, which has STEAM already written into its DNA. So in the way that we teach and we challenge our students to think through making, employing the design thinking method and challenging our students to think about the use of art and how the things that they make might change the way that we think, care, interact, or help one another. But this module that I'm gonna talk about that's in its second year is a little bit different. I wanted to see what would happen if we applied the STEAM method to the way that our students not only make their artwork, but also to the way that they research. So our course really challenges the students to ask the big questions of life how things are, why things are, sorry, the way that they are and how they can be better. So this scales from individual experiences of a world that might not be designed to suit them all the way up to utopian dreaming. So we see design as being inherent in the systems and structures of organization and power that we live under. But in order to challenge a system, the students and also us as teachers have to be able to see it. 
So this interdisciplinary research project is designed for the first year BA Art and Design students. It puts a problem or a challenge at the center of what the students learn. In this way, they are exposed to a broader range of contexts and hear enriched perspectives from a variety of different places like politics, economics, philosophy, and social commentary. It gives them a better handle on an ever complex world and it also gives them greater agency as critical citizens and makers. This isn't um, my idea or a new idea. This is um, in lots of different places and is currently being trialed at innovative schools like the London Interdisciplinary School. So I also tested the idea of intensively taught modules. So I put this over the first two weeks of the beginning of term. At the heart of the investigation was a problem, inequality. And then we looked at how this manifests in different part of, parts of life, but also how it's understood by different specialisms. So I reached out to colleagues across the university and thanks to their generosity, this year, our students have heard from academics in health, economics and social care. So this is their written module and as such it's intended to feed their making and to provide them with the information needed to make informed and nuanced work. So it's not about proposing solutions in this module, it's about better understanding the problem to help feed their making practices. The approach for this module was twofold. Firstly, I wanted to help them learn about inequality from new perspectives to acquire knowledge, but also I wanted to teach them how to communicate complex thoughts and ideas, both verbally and with academic rigor in writing too. So we had um, lectures from colleagues across different faculties. Eleni Papayanaki made this bespoke lecture for our students, which explained both the data to support the presence of income and wealth inequality across the globe, but also the economic models which are responsible. Um, and here I have another example from Albert Moylan who talked about inequality through the subject of social work. So with everything moving online this year, I was also able to access and choose from recorded lectures on other modules, obviously getting and asking for permission from the lecturers to show it first, which has been incredibly helpful. Each lecture had conversation groups following them to first reiterate the information that was presented, talking about how we each interpreted it, and then the scope of the perspectives and what that means for other ideas. There were conversation prompts, which I can, I'm gonna show you in a few slides, and breakout rooms worked really well for this. We didn't just stick to lectures, but had a variety of media to watch and engage with. This very challenging and eye-opening documentary by Netflix is now available on YouTube and charts the rise of mass incarceration in the States and the reasons why it disproportionately affects people of color. And of course, I also showed them examples of how artists and designers respond to themes and issues um, around inequality informed through research and conversation. So this module culminated in two 750 word reports one analyzed a source from anywhere about any inequality and the other was rooted in an art and design context. So they were asked how artists have represented or challenged inequality or about issues within the art world itself. Now, in order to write these reports, it was important to cover principles of sharing academic and informed perspectives through writing. So we had debate clubs, which helped them voice their opinions or challenge them to argue the opposite side of an argument. And these were some of the prompts that we use. Um, and we also had conversation groups, uh, as I mentioned previously, that were guided by suggested questions and points of discussions from the various speakers and lectures. These are level four students, our first year students, and as such, they aren't necessarily aware of how to discern good and reliable information online. Um, so we looked at the idea of fake news and how to find um, and determine credible information. We even covered why they should bother researching at all. I took nothing as a given. And then we worked out how to synthesize this information, ideas or arguments into writing. We did smaller and larger writing tasks for different audiences with different registers and tones. 
here are some of the things that um, the students wrote about, which I think really demonstrates the ambitions of the students' research and the sensitivity with which they approach these topics. Now, I know this text is small for you, so I'm just going to read the titles. So Kanan, um, one of our students wrote, Representation Beyond Fantasy, a critical report on Charles Moendo's Which Angel of Death Appears in Afrofuturist Visions of High-Tech Black Societies, and he focused on the Black Panther movie. Um, and another on the right, Ethics in Documentary, Equality and Representation by Toby. Um, and here's some of the feedback that I had from students. I found that they were better able to recognize the creative aspect of academic writing that's, that bridges different knowledges or perspectives, and that by hearing from different specialist voices, they were working in new and challenging interdisciplinary ways. Now for my second example. So this other example of STEAM thinking takes these ideas and translates it to, much, to working with much younger children. So starting 18 months ago, the Junior STEAM Academy takes the ethos and the design thinking model I've just talked through and it applies it to primary teaching. Um, so that's uh, before secondary school. Um, at primary school, we have less of a boundary between subjects with generalist teachers who are better placed to teach across the subjects. Many schools in the UK have ad adapted to topic-based learning. So you learn about one subject, like bees, from all different perspectives. When you're doing fractions in maths, you calculate the amount of pollinating plants in a square meter, for example. The JSA takes this um, and it proposes that we take it one step further so that it becomes about the solving of a problem within that topic. So learning about bees becomes how do you help the bees? This crucially gives the students the opportunity to do something with what they've learned, to contribute to the solving of a tangible problem. This is a hands-on process that gives the students the ability to try some of these methods. At the JSA, we interpreted our STEAM method and applied it to primary teaching. This is the new method that, I that we devised, um, and I'll go through each of these steps in slightly more detail, but there's not much time to go through it um, thoroughly, but maybe more so later on. Um, so these examples relate specifically to Key Stage 2 Year 5 students, so the students are aged um, around 10 or 11, but the method can be pitched for different age groups all the way down to kindergarten or reception class. Um, so firstly, with the prepare, the students ascertain what knowledge they already know and they pull their information, seeing if they can infer or hypothesize from it. This is an important process to develop group communication skills and their confidence to center and learn from their own experiences. These, um, by the way, are screenshots from the manual that we're putting together as the Junior STEAM Academy. So I realize that the text will be quite small, but this is just to give you a kind of sense of the worksheets that we give to these teachers. Secondly, they learn about the topic in their lessons. So they explore it through different subjects or lenses. Um, these worksheets that detail the method are intended for the teachers, not the students, who would identify a manageable but existing problem within the topic that the students can contribute to solving. The third step is ideation, which is translated to coming up with ideas. So this uses many of the same individual and group techniques for thinking through problems that we use at Steamhouse um, with much older people. Um, from looking at root causes to thinking of the user, mind mapping or creating alter egos. The students then begin the iterative design process. So they make, they test, and they remake using quick throwaway materials and analyzing what did and didn't work. Whatever the students make needs to have the opportunity to be shared. And that's what this present offers. So either, either as a kind of presentation or an exhibition format, or maybe something um, more virtual like uh, social media. At the JSA, we have trialed this method with two pilot projects. The idea being in the future that schools can undertake the process alone, but with our guidance through the manual and worksheets, um, or they can engage with other levels of engagement from CPD sessions with staff, making sessions with students, all the way up to visiting the STEAM house facilities and engaging in a challenge. Uh, these involve ideation and prototyping sessions with hands-on activities. 
with again the opportunity to make these um, this work public in the same way that we encourage the schools to do. So through um, this process, these are the attributes and strengths that we are trying to encourage or build in our students so that they um, have a sense of social responsibility, that they're able to empathize with different users or experiences all over the world, that they're curious, that they're interested in learning for the sake of learning and that they want to find out more, that they're observant, that they pay close attention to how things work um, and how things could potentially be better. Um, that they're flexible and able to adapt ideas dependent on feedback or criticisms, that they're collaborative and work together, growing ambition and bringing to the group different um, abilities or strengths. And finally, that they're resilient, that they don't um, get uh, disheartened if something doesn't work, but that they try again. In other words, these are the things necessary and desirable in industry, as we've seen in Patrick's and Lara's presentations. Hopefully this gives you a sense of how we are scaling these methods and processes to work with different aims, different periods, different facilities, and all the way from primary school through to further education and onto the industry itself. And hopefully you can also see how applicable our content is for curriculum, um, and how applicable that is for industry and vice versa. So um, at Steam House, we're trying to learn from each other and build at every level of engagement. And that's everything from me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alice. Uh, we have a number of questions uh, in the box. Uh, I will. Uh, Take a few selected questions to manage time better. So the first question is uh, uh, for benefit of audience, STEAM stand for the integration of uh, science, technology, engineering with art, design, and mathematics. Now the question uh, for the panel panelists is uh, how can we use STEAM education? Please explain uh, with a real life uh, example. So I think uh, question, you have explained it well, how do we use STEAM education? But if you can uh, mention a certain organization, a school or a college where they have integrated STEAM into their uh, learning teaching processes, that would uh, clarify. Any, any one of the panelists? Okay. Um, I'd say that uh, Lara's new course that she's writing is an excellent example of how you can overtly take the STEAM methodology um, and work with it to build an entire course around it. Um, I'd say that often in art and design teaching, many of these things are present, even if they're not presented in, with the same language. Um, these are very kind of um, core principles that fuel a lot of creative um, practices and industries. But what we're doing is we're identifying what those key things are um, and we're really honing in on them um, and working out the best ways of doing things. So in terms of examples at BCU, BA Art and Design, the new course especially that's being written, but I would say that it's often present um, within many of our individual modules. Thank you. The next question is by Bani Kaur, which is a very, very interesting question. Will all students be able to access and leverage this tech? I think the question is, uh, uh, is it meant for people who join the STEAM uh, stream of education or uh, it is uh, for everybody, every course? Any of you? Lara, I think this might relate to the new course because it yeah. up with the new thing. Yeah. So it is about the access to all students or uh, to only students who opt for STEAM-based education? Um, well, just to give the example for the course um, that I'm working on, um, we're going to, we propose offering it out to any students as well who want to um, engage with that creative technology. And also what we've realized um, currently is a lot of our staff and technicians um, haven't necessarily um, had the opportunity to engage with all of this technology. So we're, we're trying to work in ways where we offer and provide workshops, whether physical workshops or online workshops 
for um, both students and staff um, in other schools and across the faculty and the university should they wish to start to engage with these tools. Um, it, it's currently already being run as an extracurricular pilot in one of our schools in the School of Visual Communication. So outside of the curriculum, any students interested in engaging with this technology are now getting the opportunity to do it. And we're seeing quite a big take up and a keenness uh, for students to want to engage. And we know that staff are also saying they'd like to engage more with it as well. That's interesting, thank you. I think this is a very innovative solution to introduce uh, STEAM as uh, an option for uh, whoever, whoever wants to innovate or uh, integrate uh, our design with the technology. There's another uh, very interesting question. In your presentation, you had mentioned the design uh, of various labs. The question is how different labs of art design can be involved for students from uh, primary stage onwards? How different labs are you for students uh, from primary stage onwards? Um, well, I'm just our labs that we are obviously looking at are, you know, we are at the moment thinking of undergraduate level, but I see no, I mean, there's obviously a lot of connection between what we're doing and what Alice is already doing in primary education. I mean, in a way, she's got a lab, she's got them all in one lab experimenting get together in Steam House. So I think it's sort of... Um, that lab concept, it, it can work very well. And I think Alice is already proving that with her junior STEAM Academy. I mean, we have deliberately at undergraduate level separated them out, but I think we imagine there'd just be one big um, sort of blurry mess in terms of how students navigate through those labs. Um, and I think Alice is already sort of combining all of that thought into, into what she's doing now. So I, I think it could thread all the way through from primary, like Alice said, all the way through to um, higher education. Yeah, thank you. There's another very interesting question from Manpreet Kaur. How STEAM would be helpful for Indian students who are aspiring to work with uh, foreign uh, Companies. I think uh, the answer could be along the lines of uh, problem solving, creative thinking, something like that, is it? I think, um, yeah, the example that I gave with Mark McDonald, um, they're a really quite significant company here in the UK, maybe not as big as some of the global giants. Um, but I think one of the things that that came out quite clearly in the work that we did with them was that a lot of the technical skills and attributes that were required perhaps 10 years ago, they're very aware that some of those technical jobs to be done will be done by machines. And, and so one of the reasons that they wanted to engage early career professionals in the workshops that we created was to think about well, what are the skills and attributes that will enable us to work towards a sustainable future. And the big ones that came out were problem solving, creative thinking, um, systems thinking, being able to kind of zoom out of, of, of problems and look at them from a kind of helicopter level. And then also just empathy, you know, social skills and being able to, uh, to operate in a, in, in a highly social environment is what they were looking for. So I'd imagine um, that those larger global firms will be thinking in exactly the same way. Thank you. There's a very interesting question from uh, Shikha Jain. She wants to know whether uh, STEAM education can go along with the new <coughs> Indian education policy. I'll answer it on behalf of the panelists. See, uh, Indian education uh, policy has taken some initiatives of bringing experiential education, but I think it is uh, far uh, removed from the full-blown uh, STEAM education. We need to provide uh, greater freedom to the schools to bring in uh, STEAM-based uh, options. So I, I hope that in due course of time, Indian education will uh, have more STEAM based uh, education uh, courses, even if uh, these, if, even if it is for uh, students who want to opt for it on voluntary basis, apart from their regular studies. I think uh, the time uh, is up. There are a number of other questions. We'll uh, 
get the responses from the panelists and uh, uh, email the answers uh, to all the people who have raised the questions. Uh, I wish to thank uh, the panelists uh, very much for uh, very erudite uh, and very illuminating presentations. We in India are uh, new to this team model of education, but I think uh, you have shown us the way and I look forward to our schools and colleges adopting STEAM-based education in a big way. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank you, Sarah, for introducing all the panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting Thank you us. all the participants for coming over and for staying with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.